And I called illusion. And then I had dinner with Maya, and so I thought, oh, this is definitely synchronistic. <laughs> no doubt about this one. And uh, I'm so tuned into the movies. I think um, while this movie was being made, I, I became aware of it from someone. And I was aware that this movie was being made and that it was, it was a long process, like a birthing process. And what I found out later on was that it's really a forgiveness movie, but the man who was making it, uh, he used to star in that, that uh, television show Party of Five. And he basically ran out of money. Uh, and so he, he said he went uh, door to door. Uh, he called his parents up and asked for money, and he was going door to door asking for people to donate so he could finish his movie. And I could feel like this, this movie had a lot of profound content that this was a movie wanting to get made. And then when he got it made, uh, actually what helped him get it made too was uh, Kirk Douglas uh, found out about it. And he said, I'll play in your movie. You could put me in your movie and I'll support it that way. And this was after Kirk Douglas uh, had had a stroke. So he's in the movie, his words are sometimes slurred, uh, but he plays someone who's who's uh, old and, and seems to be ill and so forth in the movie. And um, what I think is so great about this movie is uh, it really shows what we have to go through to really forgive. Like we've got this ego voice in our mind that's always harsh and it always is putting us down. It's always saying we're not going to be able to do it. We're not going to be able to make it. And we have to face that voice of self-condemnation, and we have to like stare it down and transcend it. You know, we have to, we have to literally transcend this voice. And in this movie, the Kirk Douglas uh, character, he's a he's a filmmaker who's quite up in age, and basically, he is has a memory that he's pushed out of awareness, whereby he got a woman pregnant and the woman had a child, and a son, and basically he was into the filmmaking industry, you know, glitz, famous, and this and this. He basically just wanted to ignore that whole part, as if it never happened. Uh, just push it out of awareness, not, not have anything to do with her or his son, just kind of let go. And so when he's up in years, you know, he's, that's like haunting him. Here he is. He's up, he's getting older, he's getting sick, and he remembers this haunting memory of this woman and this uh, son that he just has completely disowned. And he's given an opportunity to get in touch with his son's life, to literally view scenes from his son's life, almost like, you might say, uh, spiritual characters, like a spirit character comes into his life and basically gives him an opportunity to review from the Akashic records uh, his son's life, the life of his son that he never met. Uh, he just knew existed. <laughs> and, and that is where he can start to heal the wound he has in himself. Because he feels bad about this, but it's so pushed out of awareness, he needs many opportunities. So he's going to get a chance to review these scenes, and he gets very interested in the son's life. You know, he can hardly stay in the theater chair uh, because he gets so uh, inspired. And in the end, you know, what it is, it's in, in our mind, we have to take the grievance or the hurt, and we have to realize that it was only a call for love. That's all it was, to extend the love that we have in us. And he actually has the opportunity in this movie to, to really, really see the call for love, to, to, to realize the mistake that he made, but that it's not like a permanent mark on his soul he can actually let the love well up in him and, and want to extend that to his, to his son. And so it's really, it's a movie for all of us because every time we think we've let somebody down, we mistreated somebody or somebody mistreated us or hurt us, it was just a call for love. It was our own call for love to, to see past the, the attack or the grievance, to see that we were just Whoever it was, they were just crying out for love, and anything that we did wrong, our mistakes, were just cries for love, you know, were just to see it in a different way. And so I really think, they, he finally got it made, and I don't think he found a major distributor, but I think, uh, I did hear that it made it out on spiritual cinema 
network, you know, Stephen Simons, I think it got circulated that way, and I, I was able to get a hold of it, so I hope you'll enjoy it, and then afterwards we can all share our impressions of this film and, and what it touches in our own hearts about something that we had buried in the past or buried in the mind that we were able to see, oh, that was just my call for love. <laughs> Nothing for me to feel bad about. Okay, I will uh, turn this light off and you can roll. so proud that you are my son.